Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using slope deflection method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, there are two columns, column AB and column DC and there is a beam BC. This frame is symmetrical in the dimensions. Also, the loading is symmetrical. So, this is a non sway type frame. The columns carry point loads 20 kN in the centers. The beam carries uniformly distributed load 15 kN per meter acting for the full span. The length of the columns is 4 meter and the length of the beam is 5 meter. The moment of inertia for the columns is given as 2i and for the beam it is i. In this frame let us find the kinematic indeterminacy. For that we have to check the supports and the joints. In the points A and D, there are fixed supports. In the fixed supports, there will be no deflection and slope. In this frame, there are two joints, joint B and joint C. In these joints only, beam and columns are connected. Since this frame is a non-sway type frame, there will be no deflection in the joints. But in these joints, there will be slope. So the kinematic indeterminacy of the frame is 2. In the joint B, we have the slope theta B. And in the joint C, we have the slope theta C. So in this analysis, there are two unknowns. To find out the two unknowns, we need two equilibrium conditions. The equilibrium conditions can be made from the joint B and from the joint C. In these joints, the summation of the moments will be zero. So, in the joint B, MBA plus MBC will be zero. And in the joint C, MCB plus MCD will be zero. Now, let us make the fixed end moments. In the column AB, there is a point load 20 kN acting in the center. The formula for the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and positive WL upon 8. Using the formulas, we can find the fixed end moments M of AB and M of BA. Now, let us take the beam BC. In the beam BC, UDL 15 kN per meter is acting for the full span. The formula for the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Using the formulas, we can find the fixed end moments M of BC and M of CB. Now let us take the column CD and find out the fixed end moments. In the column CD, there is a point load 20 kN acting in the center. The formulas for the fixed end moments are minus WL upon 8 and WL upon 8. Using the formulas, we can find M of CD and M of DC. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations in the column AB. In the equations, let us apply the fixed end moments. The moment of inertia for AB is 2i. So instead of i, we have to apply 2i. Length of AB is 4 meter. Let us apply that. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So, theta A will be 0. Finally, we are making two equations in the column AB. 
Now let us make the slope deflection equations in the beam BC. Length of BC is 5. Let us apply that. Also, let us apply the fixed end moments. Finally, we are making two equations in the beam BC. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations in the column CD. First, let us apply the fixed end moments. The moment of inertia for CD is 2i. So, instead of i, we have to apply 2i. Length of CD is 4 meter. Let us apply that. In the point D, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So, theta D will be 0. Finally, in the column CD, we are making two slope deflection equations. Now, let us make the equilibrium equations. The first equation can be made in the joint B. In the joint B, there are two moments, MBA and MBC. When we add both of them, it will be zero. We have already made the slope deflection equations for MBA and MBC. Let us apply them. Finally, we have made one equilibrium equation. Let us name this equation as equation number 7. The second equilibrium equation can be made in the joint C. Here, when we add MCD and MCB, it will be 0. We have already made the slope deflection equations for MCB and MCD. Let us apply them and add them. Finally, we have made the second equilibrium equation. Let us name this equation as number 8. We have made two equilibrium equations, number 7 equation and number 8 equation. Now, let us use the calculator and solve these two equations. If you do not know how to solve two equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator and solved the equations. For E theta B, I am getting 8.8541 and for E theta C, I am getting minus 8.8541. When we apply the value of E theta B in the equation number 1, we are getting MAB. When we apply the value of E theta B in the equation number 2, we are getting MBA. When we apply the values of E theta B and E theta C in the equation number 3, we are getting MBC. When we apply the values of E theta B and E theta C in the equation number 4, we are getting MCB. When we apply the value of E theta C in the equation number 5, we are getting MCD. Finally, when we apply the value of E theta C in the equation number 6, we are getting MDC. So, in this analysis, we have found all of the moments. For MAB, we have got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. For MBA, we have got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. For MBC, we have got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. For MCB, we have got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. For MCD, we have got a negative value. That means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. For MDC, we have got a positive value. That means it is acting in the clockwise direction. Now, let us find the reactions. First, let us take the column AB and find out the reactions. We can find out HA when we take moment about B. Then, we can apply the rule sigma H is 0. Using the rule, we can find out HB. Now, let us take the beam BC and find out the reactions. 
here there is no need to take movement because this movement and this movement is acting in the opposite directions they will get eliminated so no need to consider these two movements this is udl when we multiply the udl with the distance we will get the total load when we divide the total load by 2 we will get rb and rc now let us take the column cd and find out the reactions to find out hc let us take moment about d finally we are getting hc then let us apply the rule sigma h is 0 using the rule we can find out hd now let us make the shear force diagram using the loads and reactions we can make the shear force diagram in the column a b then let us make the shear force diagram in the beam b c then in the column c d now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram for that first we have to make the free moment diagram for the free moment diagram we have to assume all the spans are simply supported beams using these formulas we can find the moments then using the direction of the end moments we can draw the end moment diagram then we can combine the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram so that we will get the bending moment diagram now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video